Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they are working on. Today we have Zander. Hi Zander, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Hey everybody, my name is Xander. I'm a dev advocate at Arise AI and I'm really excited to be showing you a brand new open source tool that we're releasing for ML observability in your notebook. The name of the tool is Phoenix, Arise Phoenix. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely excited to, to show it off today. Yeah, want to see it. Awesome. Uh, so I guess without any further ado, I'll I'll just uh yeah jump into the de the demo. Let me let me share my screen here. What you're seeing here is is Phoenix. It's an app that runs. In this case, it was launched from a Colab server, and this is the notebook that I launched it from. I've actually got a data frame here containing um, inference data. In this case, inference data from an image classification problem. And you can actually see some of the examples here. I've got uh, these images of people performing various actions, and I've got ground truth and predicted classes for each image. And what I did is I actually launched Phoenix, and we took the embedding data for both the training and production images that were in this data set. And up here in the top, you actually have the embedding drift over time, the drift of your production embeddings relative to your training embeddings over time. I zoomed in to this period of high drift. So that what, is the, what is drift of embeddings? Well, what does it even mean? Yeah, yeah. So in this case, it's actually looking at um, the centroid. It's it's like Euclidean distance between centroids. You, you, you take a centroid of um, your training embeddings. You take production embeddings from a period of time. In this case, this, this window right here where the drift is high. You compute the centroid of both, and you take the Euclidean distance. So the Euclidean distance starts out low, and over time, it increases. So now we're looking at a period where the embeddings have, on average, drifted from the train. The production embeddings have, on average, drifted from the training embeddings. And, on, and in practice, it means that the images are sufficiently different now, right? Yeah, yeah. So some, something has gone on that has caused the images, the distribution of the images that we're seeing in production has changed, basically. And the story I'm going to tell you is, how can you figure out what's changed? So what we did is we took those production embeddings. We actually um, used UMAP to reduce the dimension down to three dimensions. That's this plot that you're seeing here. And we actually are, are clustering the data using HDB scan. And we are highlighting the clusters of your data that we think are potentially problematic. And the reason that we think that these data points are problematic is because this particular cluster consists 100% of um, production data points. That just means that in production, your model is making predictions on data that it never saw during training. And in this little pane, you can actually see the examples from this particular cluster. And you can see that they're actually different from the training data examples, uh, because these ones actually have this noise added to them. And I can click on a second cluster. You can see this cluster too is also different from the training data. It's also got noise. This one is also different. In this case, the, the images are actually black and white. Some of them are blurry. And what I can do is I can export each cluster. What that does is it's going to save it to my Colab environment, can come back into my notebook environment, and actually view that data frame right here. And I can visualize those images from that cluster right here. Um, so the story here is this is an example of active learning. Phoenix has helped you identify those pockets of your production data that are um, where, your, where your production data is drifted from your training data. And now the, ne the actionable next step is to actually take those, uh, take those images, label them, and fine tune your model, right? Um, I'm going to jump into a second demo, Alexi, if we have, a sec if we have time, though. How yeah, so I'm, I have a question about this one. Yeah, so okay. I missed the part where you launched the app like how did you actually do this like how yeah, did yeah. you so i actually launched it before the demo um but i'll show you what it looks like i already ran all this code um so in the notebook i import some libraries i download some data i look at the data frames look at some examples and the part where you actually start using phoenix is you define a schema for your data frame, that's basically just telling us what are the columns of my data frame? What do they represent? Are they 
predicted values? Are they ground truth? Um, is it an image embedding? Once you've defined this schema to um, basically tell us what do the columns of the data frames mean, we define a Phoenix data set, which basically just wraps the data frame and that schema object together. And then you launch the app, right? And then the app will just start and you can, you can actually either open it in a new tab as I did here, or you can actually uh, view it in line in your notebook. So you can actually also run it in line in your notebook like hmm. this. And then That's... from here, you know, it's the same UI I showed you. This is just a um, inside of the notebook itself. Uh, it just depends on how you want to do things. You can get a little bit more real estate in a different tab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's that's yeah. really great. I cool. did not know that it's even possible to do such things in Collab. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, runs in Collab, runs in hosted Jupyter environments, runs on local Jupyter notebooks. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay, so what's the second demo? Yeah, so the second one is a little bit of a sneak, pre sneak peek of uh, what we've been working on recently. Um, we're, we just added in support for prompt response pairs. So we're also getting into the space of LLM observability. This is an example I've actually got running locally on, on my machine. And it's a similar story. Like this time we've got embedding data, but the embeddings represent not images, but prompts. So we're actually looking at prompt response pairs and in this case, the embeddings represent prompts. And I can drill into this particular cluster just to give you a, a summary or a, a, an example of the data we're dealing with. Here's one of the prompts. The prompt says an HIV self-testing kit is on sale for the first time in the UK, and it's a pretty long prompt. So it turns out that this for, for this particular data set, it's actually, the prompts are um, articles from CNN, and the responses are, summaries of those articles. So the LLM has been instructed to take an article, summarize the article, and return that as the response. And the cool thing that I've done here is that unlike the previous example, where I was coloring the data based on whether it was training or production data, this time I'm actually coloring the data based on the Rouge score. So I've computed the Rouge score for um, these different examples. What Rouge that... score is, yeah. Yeah, what, what Rouge score is, is it's a, um, a metric that tells you, basically tells you how how good did your did your model do at summarizing the input piece of text. Um, so you can see here, you can see here if you zoom into this cluster, this one's green, mostly green, a little bit of blue, and it has a rouge score mainly in this neighborhood near zero point five. That's a good rouge score. That means that for examples in this cluster of data, our model's doing. A really good job, and this was actually this was actually a GPT three, I think. It means that the model's doing a really good job of summarizing those pieces of text. The Rouge score is good, but if I zoom out a little bit, you can see there's this cluster right over here, and this cluster looks mostly blue. So the Rouge score is much lower. That just means that the model is struggling to actually summarize the examples in this particular cluster. So let's take a look. And immediately, you can notice something different about the examples in this cluster. They're actually in a different language. It turns out that these examples are in Dutch. So the, the Dutch prompts got put into an entirely different cluster. And just visually, I'm able to see, OK, the model's not doing as good of a job at um, summarizing Dutch articles. Um, so this is just a taste of what we've got coming down the line. We've got a lot of ideas of how to. Um, create workflows to help people understand why LLMs are struggling in production. Um, so that's the demo, uh, that's the product, and really excited to, to be launching it. We just launched last Thursday. And uh, do you have a notebook for this, uh, for, this, uh, for this demo, for the second one? This one, I actually don't. Um, I'm working on it today. I've just launched this one from, my, from, a, from a IDE. <laughs> Will be interesting to see that too. It'll be out. It'll be out. Uh, I think uh, end of day or tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So by the time we release it, will be already available. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. This is uh, such an awesome tool. I'm wondering how many people are working on it. Yeah. So it's been a team of three uh, core contributors at Arise AI, in addition to a lot of people just chipping in and helping. Um, so it's really been a village over there. Um, we are 
about to start accepting our first contributions from the public. So if you're interested in either using the product or actually contributing to contributing to the tool, um, or even just like giving us feedback to help shape the direction of the tool, we we would really love any feedback. We really are doing a lot of usability usability studies to figure out um, how we can really make this thing the best pro the best product that it can be. Um, so yeah, I just encourage you to join our Slack. Um, that's the Arise AI Slack community. Um, check out the GitHub. And again, the package is called Arise Phoenix, A-R-I-Z-E dash Phoenix. That's pip install Arise Phoenix. Check it out. Yeah. So the best way to give feedback is, uh, I guess, first try the tool and then go join, join the Slack community. And then do you have like a special channel for? Yeah, we've got a, a Phoenix dash support, Phoenix support okay. channel. I'm really active in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about code contribution? Like, is it possible to make uh, to contribute to the code base? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We're, uh, we're we haven't accepted any external contributions yet, but uh, I I imagine that we'll be getting getting some people wanting to contribute soon, and we're really uh, excited to to be working with the community to build the product. We already have good first issues, or not yet? We've got uh, I think around fifty issues right now. Like um, you know, that there are these good first issues for somebody who oh, just wants oh, yeah. to start contributing. Yeah. Like, do you have any of those yet, or not? We do have a first G tag. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what are your plans? Yeah. Um, I'll give you a little sneak peek of like some of the ideas that we've got um coming. So, you know, in this particular example that I pulled up right here, um, I visually showed you that okay, the Rouge score in this cluster is is green and therefore it's better than the blue rouge score in this cluster. But I had to rely on visually doing that. So one thing that we're working on next is actually computing in cluster metrics. So being able to say, okay, click on this cluster and get all of the metrics that I care about, whether that's rouge score, whether that's like the percent of percent of uh, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, anything like that, right? That's that's one idea. Another thing, you know, that we're working on actively is the idea of summarizing clusters. So this, this is getting pretty meta because now we're starting to use LLMs to analyze and understand other LLMs. But the idea here would be like, this is a lot of text to read through to understand what this cluster is about. Um, what if we could actually take the data points in this cluster, which are themselves pieces of text, feed them back into GPT in order to get a summary of the cluster. So now you could imagine maybe this cluster over here is summarized, you know, GPT says, okay, this is a, a summary of um, news articles in English. And then GPT says, okay, this is a summary of news articles in Dutch. That's that's one of the next steps. And then as a one one last thing I'll mention, this one I think is is on our radar. I don't know that it's necessarily on the roadmap, but it's something we're thinking about is, is how do you evaluate, um, how do you build in evaluations for LLMs. So we're looking at um, open AI evals, potentially incorporating some of those evaluation frameworks into the product. Um, yeah, that's kind of a, a taste of, I think, what we've got coming down the line for LLMs in particular. It'll be interesting to see the prompts that you come up with to summarize the clusters. Since it's yeah. all open source, right, you'll just put it in the, in the code base, right? Yeah, oh yeah, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all gonna be visible. It all is visible, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any advice to anyone who's watching this? Mm, advice, particularly on uh, anything in particular, or on maybe ML observability in particular, or observability life. Life. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just. <laughs> I would. I would just say, like, I would just encourage, and you know, people who are watching this video are probably already doing this, but I have uh, been at a few community events recently. I was at the Hugging Face event that people are calling the Woodstock of AI. I was at this amazing OpenAI plugins hackathon over the weekend. Um, if you're not out in the community right now, you gotta get out in the community because it really is kind of our once in a generation moment where there's a transformative technology and it's gonna change the face of society. It's gonna change the face of um, the technology industry. And it's it's probably the most exciting time to be out there in the community. So just just get out there, just get out there. Okay, exciting. So thanks for <laughs> joining us today. Thanks for doing two demos. Thanks for answering all these questions. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, looking forward to seeing how the tool progresses.
Awesome. Yeah. And thanks so much for the opportunity, Alexi. Yeah. Thank you.